Welcome to the fifth and final part of our series, where we're talking about creating your first robot with ROS and Ubuntu Core. In part four, we did some math and wrote the ROS driver for our robot. What we've done so far requires several ROS nodes to be running at once, and sharing it involves uploading our source code somewhere and convincing folks to install ROS, build our package, and use it. Today, we're going to simplify both those issues by discussing ROS launch files and then packaging everything we've written as a snap that can be installed by your friends with a few keystrokes, even without knowing anything about ROS. By the way, remember that this is also a blog series. The link is in the description. There are a few new prerequisites here. First of all, you need to know what snaps are, and you should have completed the Create Your First Snap tutorial, the link for which is in the description. Second, you need to have an account on the Snap Store. Don't worry, it's free, we just need a place to release our Snap so we can point our friends to it. In parts 3 and 4, we needed to open several terminals because we needed to run several different ROS nodes. It's already difficult to remember every component of our system, and it gets exponentially harder as we start adding parameters and stuff. Running individual nodes is handy for testing things out, but we're done with that step. It's time to make our system a little more of a product, something you can just run and use to control your robot. As you learn going through the ROS tutorials, ROS has a tool for dealing with this, launch files. These give us a simple language we can use to specify what nodes need to launch and with what parameters. Let's get started writing launch files for the ROS system that controls our robot. We'll put these files in the EduKit bot package we've been working on throughout the series in a new launch folder. In order for our launch files to be reusable, we're not actually going to create just a single launch file. We want to be able to bring up the whole system with a single launch file, but we also want to keep things as modular as possible. So we'll write one launch file per subsystem, and then a super launch file in charge of bringing up the entire system. On our robot, we have two such subsystems, teleoperation and low-level control. Before we get to those though, let's write that super launch file. Let's create a new edukitbot.launch file and open it up in our editor. All this launch file is going to do is include the launch files for our two subsystems that we're about to write, one for teleoperation and one for low-level control. And that's it for that one, so let's move on to our teleoperation launch file. You're probably wondering, why exactly are we splitting these up? Well, it's important to properly design things to handle change, or you'll just kick yourself later. For example, let's say in the future you want to work towards making this robot autonomous. In that case, you may no longer want the teleoperation nodes to be launched. Do you think you'll remember which nodes relate to teleoperation and which ones don't? <laughs> I won't. It's easier to keep related pieces together and remove the include line that launches those pieces if you want to remove that functionality. Anyway, on with the teleop launch file. We first need to make an includes directory into which we'll place our subsystem launch files. Now create a new teleop.launch.xml file in the includes directory. Why .xml and not .launch like the other one? Because ROS launch, the tool that runs launch files, will tab complete files that end in .launch. Since these subsystem launch files don't really do much by themselves, we don't want to expose them like that. Ending them with .xml essentially hides them from ROS launch, but still lets us use them as includes. Anyway, open that file in your editor. As you recall from parts 3 and 4, there are two nodes that make up our teleoperation, the joy and teleop nodes. For the joy node, we're going to make use of the auto repeat rate parameter. This tells the joy node to rebroadcast joystick values even if they haven't changed at a rate of at least 1 Hz. Now we're doing this to make sure that we don't hit the timeout functionality we put in our driver node in part 4 just because the joystick didn't happen to move. For the teleop node, we're using the scale angular parameter that we discussed in part 4 to make the robot properly turn. Alright, save and exit. We've just added a launch file to a ROS package that launches nodes from other packages. However, nothing guarantees that those packages will be installed alongside this one. We need to update EduKitBot's package.xml to actually depend upon Joy and Teleoptoist Joy, which will ensure that they are installed. Like we discussed in part 4, this is saying that it depends upon Joy and Teleoptoist Joy in order to run. Okay, save and exit that as well. Now let's create a new control.launch.xml file and open it up in our editor. This one is pretty simple, all it does is launch the driver we wrote in part 4. And given that I used my actual measurements as the default parameter values, I, I don't need to specify any parameters here. Yours might be different. Alright, save and exit. Okay, we're done making changes to our package, so let's rebuild it. Alright, let's take our new launch files for a spin. This time you only need a single terminal using your classic shell. First, 
as in the rest of the series, we need to make sure that we have permission to access GPIO as a user. Remember that this resets upon reboot. Now activate your workspace and launch the super launch file, which will launch everything else. You'll see all the nodes that make up our system come up, and you should be able to control your robot at this point. Now tell me that isn't easier than running them all individually. Alright, control C out of that. At this point, we have our entire ROS system launchable by a single command. Wouldn't it be awesome to have this system running as soon as we boot our Raspberry Pi? Also, how cool would it be to ask our friends to take our version of this series for a spin and also be able to test theirs? Both of these are easily accomplished by packaging our ROS system as a snap. And in case it's helpful to you, there's a link in the description to the workspace I used here. The first step towards packaging anything is typically to ensure that we're installing the components of our package correctly. ROS makes this dangerously easy to ignore with its use of Devel workspaces, but it's still important. Open up EducateBot's CMakeList.txt. We have two components in our EducateBot package, the driver and the launch files. Add an install rule for each, then save and exit. Now, in order to build a snap, we need to install a tool called Snapcraft. Typically, we would install the Snapcraft snap for this, but for reasons I won't go into here, the Snapcraft snap can't be installed on Ubuntu Core. We'll install the Debian package instead, which is a bit older, but it still works for our purposes. We tell Snapcraft how to create our snap by writing a snapcraft.yaml. We can get an initial file with Snapcraft init, then we'll do as it asks and open that file in our editor. This stuff up on top is useful metadata. The snap name must be unique across all snaps, which is why I'm putting my nickname at the end, but you're pretty much free to put whatever you want for the rest. The description I'm typing talks about interfaces. Now, this relates to confinement, which we'll talk about in a second. Grade can be either stable or devel. If it's devel, the store will prevent you from releasing into stable channels. Think of it as a, a safety net to prevent accidental releases. If it's stable, though, you can release it anywhere. Confinement can be strict, dev mode, or classic. Strict enforces confinement, whereas dev mode only logs confinement violations and allows everything. Classic is even less confined than dev mode, essentially running exactly like something you'd install from a Debian package. There's a link in the description to more documentation on confinement if you want to learn more about this. I personally always use strict unless I know for sure that the thing I'm snapping won't run successfully under confinement, in which case I'll use dev mode. I typically avoid classic unless I never intend for the snap to be confined. In our case, this snap runs perfectly well under strict confinement, and we'll discuss this some more in a minute. Now we'll tell Snapcraft how to build our Catkin workspace. Every snap is made up of a number of parts. In our case, there's only one that we're calling workspace. We say that it's built using the Catkin plugin using ROS Kinetic. We give it a list of Catkin packages to build, in this case, just Educate Bot. Finally, we give it a list of packages that need to be installed in order to build our ROS package, or more specifically, our rpi.gpio dependency. Alright, now we're going to expose our single launch file that brings up the whole system. Let's create a new app called launch that runs the ROS launch command we used earlier. We specify that this is a simple daemon, which will cause this app to run on boot. Now this has the added benefit of running as a root, which means that we no longer need to worry about permission to access GPIO. Finally, we provide a list of plugs. Okay, what are these? Well, this is all about confinement. A strictly confined snap, which is what we have here, by default doesn't really have access to anything. No network, no GPIO, no controller. Think of confinement as a wall isolating the snap from the rest of the system. We can poke little holes in the wall by specifying plugs to each bit of functionality we need. ROS needs the network for its nodes to function. We need access to the controller so we can drive the robot, and we need access to GPIO so we can actually turn the wheels. There's a link in the description to documentation on interfaces if you'd like to learn more about this. Alright, that's it. Let's build the snap. This part is pretty easy, just get into the workspace and run Snapcraft. Note that the Raspberry Pi is not a supercomputer, this is going to take some time. You'll see Snapcraft fetch ROSstep, which it then uses to determine the dependencies of the ROS packages in the workspace. This is only Educate Bot in our case, which we know depends upon ROSPy, Geometry Messages, Python RPi.gpio, Joy, and Twist Joy. It pulls those down and puts them into the snap along with ROS Core. Finally, it builds the requested packages in the workspace and installs them into the snap as well. At the end, we have our snap. Now that we have our snap built, let's test it out. First, we need to install it.
Now that it's installed, since we made our ROS system a daemon, it's already up and running. Sadly, that means it's probably already dead. Why? Because it can't access the joystick or GPIO. We need to give it permission to do that by connecting the joystick and physical memory control interfaces. Thankfully, we only need to do that once. Now that access has been granted, we just need to restart the service so it tries again. Now you should be able to drive your robot around as before, but now everything is running out of that single snap. In fact, if you uninstall the snap, you'll notice that you can't drive it anymore. So how do you share this with your friends? Well, all you need to do is push and release it in the store. We're about to use Snapcraft to register and upload a snap using the store account you created when satisfying the prerequisites. For that to work, you need to sign in with Snapcraft using your classic shell. As I mentioned before, snap names are globally unique, so only one developer can register and publish a snap with a given name. Before you can publish the snap, you need to make sure that name is registered to you. Assuming that name is available, you can proceed to upload it. Otherwise, you may need to rename and rebuild your snap to whatever name you manage to register. Now there are four release channels available by default. In order of increasing stability, these channels are Edge, Beta, Candidate, and Stable. We've tested this snap and is strictly confined, so we can really release it wherever we want. Let's go ahead and put it into the Stable channel. Once the upload and automated reviews finish successfully, anyone in the world can install our snap on the Raspberry Pi controlling their EduKit by installing it just like this. That brings our series to a close. We've gone all the way from putting together a cheap robot, to using it to learn ROS and Ubuntu Core, to learning some control theory, to actually publishing the software we wrote so others can experiment with it. I hope this brief introduction to robotics will serve you well in the years to come. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks for watching.